Thank you, Jason. And uh, thank you, all of you, for joining us at our inaugural iTwin Developer Conference. It's uh, a wonderful time. I'm just sorry that we can't be physically together. Hopefully, maybe next year we can do that. But this is an important uh, milestone for our iTwin platform. We've been working on it for some time now, and I've been very much looking forward to, to the opportunity to show what we've done to you and to explain to you why we think uh, our iTwin platform could be relevant for you. I will point out that uh, this is year number 36 for Bentley Systems. We've been in business for a, for a long while, and it, it's an important uh, milestone. We hit an important milestone only a few weeks ago. Bentley Systems had our initial public offering, which was our opportunity to sell our shares to the public and uh, give our longstanding uh, shareholders and colleagues some liquidity in our shares. And it was a great time, and we were, we were very proud of that. But it was also an opportunity for us to explain ourselves to a new audience of people who practically never heard of us before. And we had to explain, you know, what's our business about, how, what we do, how we help people, and Always when we try to explain our business, we do that through the business of our users. And we talked about when I when I was telling the people about what we our software does, I was describing, you know, the world's infrastructure and the vast types of infrastructure throughout the world. And you know, think when you think of infrastructure, roads and bridges and buildings and plants and you know, power plants, it's, it's a vast, vast uh, eclectic mix of things. And when I was telling about what we did what we do. I told them about this opportunity that's in front of us, us, the industry, to, to do to solve way bigger problems than we've been in the we've been able to uh, to do in the past. At least that our technology can be used for things that it couldn't be used for. And I told them about the opportunity around digital twins. Now digital twins is not a Bentley term. We didn't make it up. It happens to be a term that I like very much compared to many other terms that get thrown around by us and by the industry, you know, things like virtual reality and artificial intelligence and BIM. You know, those are words they don't really mean, uh, they mean anything and therefore nothing. But when you think about a digital twin, whatever idea that brings into your mind, whatever you, the connotation the words digital twin has, it's probably right. And so people who had never heard of technology, engineering technology and infrastructure, you know, CAD tools or BIM tools, nodded their head about, oh, I see, we can start, you know, simulating, modeling the physical world reflected in the digital world and start adding value to it. And, and, and everybody who heard it was hugely, hugely excited about it, including myself, of course. So the, the one part, though, that I, I got kind of bogged down is is explaining, okay, what does the twin do? Now, probably you've had lots of chance to think about digital twins and how it mean, what it means for your business, but the word twin is what causes at least some angst, at least in terms of why the problem is harder than it might seem. Twin is a term that has two meanings. It's a noun, so you have a twin of something, and people can get that, okay, that is a digital representation that reflects uh, something in the real world. But twin is also a verb. And the problem is that if we talk about infrastructure and all the types of infrastructure and all the places in the world where, where technology can model the physical world, it changes. It changes all the time. So time is a big part of what a digital twin, you know, the time aspect of it is what complicates our lives and makes the problem harder than you know, then it might seem if we could just twin something and have the world freeze, it would be wonderful. Now, when we talk about time and how a digital twin is uh, reflect is affected by time, there's really kind of three things that we might really mean by that. One is sort of historical. You can go out and you can sense things and you can take pictures of things. You can record the state of things. You can you can do point clouds. And, and generally, we call that context. And the problem of storing context information context means you know drill a borehole uh, record what you've seen and store it is that that kind of stuff is tends to be vast there's lots and lots of data involved because you know if you're sensing something you're out in the world taking pictures of something you're going to take way more pictures than you think you might ever need because it's never going to be at that state again so you mean to store it archive it and be able to track change in it that's that's a big part of what a digital twin is and we call that digital context so 
Obviously, if people are talking about digital twins, they mean the digital context. Then there's a whole other aspect of time, and that has to do with real time. Now, you know, people say, I want to have a sensor connected to something, and I want to have a control system sense, uh, connected to something. So when you're talking about now and the, the real time aspect of it, things like latency, you know, you, you have to make sure that the digital thing is connected to the real thing now. And there's a whole world of technology around things that we call infrastructure or uh, uh, IoT, you know, the Internet of Things. And they're about, you know, taking vast quantities of real time data and processing it very, very quickly. And a digital twin, absolutely positively, we mean IoT. And then a third aspect of time is when we talk about engineering data, typically engineer, what engineers do is they work on the future state of something, what something will be in the future. And the problem with the future is it's not linear. You know, there's not just one state of the future. We design things and we design permutations of things and designs go through reviews and approvals. So the state of the data that reflects what something might be in the future, you have to know, you know, is it trustworthy? Is it the real approved thing? Or is this, you know, one of the permutations? So the past context, the current IoT, and the future engineering all have to come together for a digital twin, the promise of a digital twin to be real. And so if you think about all the types of problems within all the types of infrastructure, any one company trying to work on all those things at the same time is just, it's, it's a problem way bigger. It's an opportunity way bigger than any one company. So what we thought about is, look, what should we do? What we think we can be and what I have my, my vision for where Bentley Systems should play, what role Bentley Systems should play is we would like to be a platform, an enabler. We don't want to solve any one of those problems entirely. We want to we want to work on ways to make it possible so that we and others can solve that and create the platform. So a digital twin platform, that's our mission. So let me just talk about what we would, what a digital twin platform. You have all those types of data, all the types of assets, and all the types of people who might want to connect to a digital twin. How how would a platform work? Well, I think it's got to solve a few pretty uh, pretty tough problems. Uh, well, the first of which is just the structure, and well, I'll say that transfer, speaking to software developers, we you know you're going to need transaction models and structure for the data that goes into a digital twin. And if every uh, if every organization that wanted to work on one part of a digital twin, even a single digital twin, had to solve the structure and transaction and persistence and visualization, all that stuff, if you had to solve all that stuff before you got around to working on the part of the problem that your, was your domain expertise, you know, you'd go broke trying to, to, to solve all the moving parts. So what we think is we can create a platform that can be relevant for lots of different things. And we'll work on things like persistence, things like visualization, things like transaction model. And it's going to be uh, a different mix depending on the type of asset. It's going to be a different mix depending on whether you're talking about IoT data or engineering data or context data. But a platform hopefully can make it so that any person that's working on one part of that can combine their efforts with people working on other parts of that. And, they, and nobody has to write the whole thing all at once. Think about the way that we use plat uh, platforms in our daily lives. You know, your, your Windows platform, your, your iOS platform. It helps us so that everything we use can be combined effort fairly effortlessly. So that's our mission, one mission for, for the platform. Another mission for the platform is just kind of what I say, you know, the cost of doing business, things that are, uh, you, you have to depend on, uh, things like uh, scalability, right? The platform provides the mechanism to make things scalable. And scalability is one of those things, if you don't have it in the platform, you can't make it at the layers above it. So scalability is tough. You, you, it's only as good as the weakest link. Another thing is security. Again, security is something that, you know, it consumes a, an inordinate amount of resources in a software development organization. But again, security is only, only as good as the weakest link. People that wear the black hats and try to attack uh, software, they look for where they can, they can penetrate where the, the code is weakest. So if you're going to build a platform, security has got to be a big part of it. And we hope we can make our layers secure enough that when you build on top of them, if you also take into consideration uh, security, your whole application will be as uh, secure as as uh, as we can make it. Uh, so 
scalability, durability, reliability. These are cost of doing business type things. You know, if you don't have them, you're left out. Uh, but spending a lot of time on them doesn't, you know, make your your end users happier. So those those are some cost of doing business things that I think the uh, the platform should provide. The third aspect of a digital twin platform that I think is is very important, probably for you, it is for us, is its extensibility. The the ability to uh, when you use a platform use it to solve problems today and in the future. And if I talk to a CTO or a CIO or even a CFO of one of our user organizations, and I try to explain to them that the promise of a digital twin and all the things that business opportunities that they can solve using the, the, the concepts in digital twins, I, I, I'm often met with a combination of uh, optimism. People like the prospect that a digital twin could make them more profitable, could solve problems uh, that they uh, today are unable to do if they're in government agencies. They like the idea that this can help them you know, uh, integrate lots and lots of sources of information in new and better ways. But the angst comes from, geez, if this, what if this really works? And what if all the information that we create and put into this digital twin becomes so valuable for our organization and so necessary for our operations? Well, what if the digital twin vendor doesn't you know, respond in a timely fashion to our business needs? What if we'd like to uh, you know, change the way our digital twin works? What if we'd like to combine with uh, uh, other sources of information and the and the vendor is in, incapable or unwilling to do that. Well, there's only so much pinky promising a, a company can do about how great we will be, how responsive we would be. But the flexibility aspect of it says, hey, if I decide that I'd like to take my data and move it to some other system or use some other vendor, I have to have me, the owner of the information in my digital twin, I have to have the ability to do that. So how could we make a digital twin platform be something that gives people peace of mind that their their data is owned by them and is can, and their flexibility in the future should they decide to change vendors is left open because nobody's gonna gonna put their you know, their future in something that they think is at risk or potentially could be at risk. So we thought about that long and hard, and we really want to be a digital twin platform vendor. And generally what we're talking about now in terms of software is openness and, in fact, open source. And what that generally means is that, you know, you provide your users and people who will extend the platform, use the platform with the ability to change it if they like, make copies of the data of the uh, programs if they'd like, obviously access their data without having to pay a, a license. And that form factor has worked extremely well in other uh, uh, industries. So I think the precedent is there, but it hasn't ever happened that I know of in the current BIM world, CAD world, engineering world. There has not really been a platform that is open enough that uh, that people could layer on it, and even competitors could uh, could create solutions that work together using it. So I'm here to tell you our iTwin platform is as open as we can make it. It is our absolute intention to make it possible for people to use the iTwin platform to solve problems that have nothing to do with Bentley systems. We hope we can be relevant, and we're not doing this for charity, but we're doing it because we believe if we can create the platform and the platform gets leveraged by many people, then we will have an opportunity to you know, be relevant when they succeed. So there, there hopefully can become an ecosystem of innovation around a common set of source code and data types that can be defined you know, in an open manner using tools that are built on open standards and open source. And that's what we've done. So we had to make some choices and we looked at, well, okay, if we were gonna build a open digital twin platform, what would be the layers we would build on? And we, we did this by trying to attempt to, to analyze the world out there and we picked the, the, the platforms that we could build our platform on that are open. And I have to say, one of the, 
the virtues that I like most about our, our Microsoft commitment, we do a lot with Microsoft, but their commitment to openness uh, and their abil- our ability to, to switch from Microsoft and use things that aren't dependent on Microsoft is one of the reasons we chose them as our platform. So we'll help you do the, the same analysis. Look at the iTwin platform and look at what we've done layer on top of it. And if you feel like there's some part of it that you would rather it work differently, you certainly have the ability to, to change it yourself if you'd like, forking our code, or you can generate you know, pull requests to our, uh, our repositories. We think it'll be a world where the end users benefit substantially. We hope Bentley will, will uh, benefit, obviously. But we think that we'll win if you win. And that's kind of why we've invited you here today. That's kind of what we want to spend the rest of the, this afternoon talking about. We'd like to explain to you how it works, why it works the way it does, and why it solves problems you know, the, the, in a manner that are, is as simple as can be, but no simpler. So those are the, the precepts. Those are the concepts that we've been built into our iTwin platform strategy. It also is the, the reason why you know, our... our uh, Source code is available on GitHub. You can download it if you'd like. Not many people need to do that, but the ability to do that gives you, you know, a lot of flexibility, we think, going forward. And when we combine this all together, hopefully the net will be something that is, you know, the ecosystem builds on itself. And every new participant in the ecosystem makes the rest of them stronger. So each one of us succeeding helps the other succeed, even if we're competitors. And that's hard to imagine, but I think that's absolutely true. The opportunity around digital twins is so big, way bigger than than any business uh, opportunity that we've had in the past that I think we can afford and we collectively, the industry can afford to work cooperatively on this rather than being competitive all the time. And I think the, you know, the, the world will be, uh, the infrastructure world, can get past some of the you know connections that are just not formed today and a digital twin can be a real thing so that's my take on it i won't spend any more time uh pontificating about why instead we should talk about how because digital twins are today there are people out there doing lots of really good cool stuff with our platform we hope you'll spend some time with it we hope you'll tell us what you like we also expect that you'll tell us what you'd rather it do or how you'd rather we change things. That's we would like to make this day as interactive as we can. If there are things you would rather have the platform do or not do, uh, let's hear about it. So anyway, that is kind of Bentley Systems strategy going forward. We want to be not the digital twin company, but we want to be a participant in the digital twin ecosystem built around a digital twin platform. So that's our iTwin strategy. There's a lot of moving parts in it. As I mentioned, not uh, none of it is is as easy and straightforward as it sounds in a marketing video. Uh, we're all programmers here, so we know that the devil is in all the m- many many details. But it is, uh, I think, uh, hopefully you'll you'll agree, uh, a wonderful time to be in this industry. Uh, you know, I, I just think the opportunities around you know cloud-based digital workflows uh, are you know so much more vast and i think the the outcomes can be so much more valuable that things like covid you know teach us that we gotta work differently think differently uh, and that's what uh, the opportunity is so it's not just trying to replace our existing everything we do today. It's like augmenting things, combining those, the context, the real time, and the engineering data into a single uh, cohesive uh, uh, system that people can leverage. And that's what our iTwin platform is designed to do. So thank you very much for your time. Please let us know what we, we can do to help. Uh, And hopefully we'll see you once again in the future. I very much look forward to sitting down with you physically. So, Jason, back over to you.